there, awesome people. Welcome back to the Have You Heard Podcast. And if you have not been here before, welcome to the Have You Heard Podcast. I am so thankful you're here. I am your host, Emma Mae McDaniel, and this is a very sweet day because we are having Morgan Harper Nichols talking about her book, Peace is a Practice. We're going to be talking about what is peace, how do you practice peace, and what does it look like to live in peace in the midst of hard times. And I'm really excited. I hope it brings great encouragement to you. So friends, without further ado, grab your headphones and let's get into the word. Morgan, welcome to the Have You Heard podcast. I'm so thankful that you're here today. Oh, I'm so honored to be here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. If y'all are on YouTube, you can see all of the pretty art behind her, but even more beautiful, her hair. Whenever we hopped on together, I was like, your hair is fabulous. Well, thank you. You know, some, some days I try to like, you know, fix myself up. So I love it. No, I love yeah. it. I, okay. Before we even like get into the book, I have to just acknowledge, I feel like I have followed you for years on end and oh. pinned so many things so many beautiful works of art and poetry of yours on Pinterest and been inspired by you and encouraged by you in days where that were really low for me and in days where I was really encouraged and was just affirmed. Um, Mm. So I just want to say thank you because you've invested into my life so much and we hadn't even met. (laughs) Oh, wow. That, that just means so much to hear. I mean, it's, it's just, it never stops being surreal and I, I never just stop being grateful for for all the many billions of little ways that God makes all these little connections happen. And I, I that's why I love art and creativity yeah. and making things because it's just such an opportunity to, to see that. So so thank you for affirming that um, in me and just like, yeah, just keep going. That's really encouraging. Thank oh, you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. I'm glad. And I love too the cover of your book. For those of you who can see, it's so pretty. And I love how oh, it <laughs> it's such a, like, it's literally another piece of your art. Did you design the cover? Yes. Yes, I did. I, That's I painted fun. it. And that was just such a, it was so interesting because even though I am a professional artist, quote unquote, like I, I do these things and, you know, graphic design, I still am like, wow, they let me design the cover. <laughs> I'm like, are you <laughs> sure about that? So yeah, that's another thing that feels really surreal. But I was really proud of it. It was one of those things where I was like, you know what? If if I walk away from that and I'm and I'm like, yeah, I'm proud of it, then then I believe that matters. So I'm really I'm really encouraged to know that other people like it too. <laughs> mm, that's amazing. And I would. If, on, if I was on your team, I would be right on board with them saying you should design it. And they were in the right mind when they asked that. I love even the, I want to just read it, the subtitle. I love subtitles so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and your subtitle is an invitation to breathe deep and find a new rhythm for life. And before going into other questions, I'm so excited to ask you. I wanted to ask, why did you pick the word invitation? Do you feel like people have to... I don't know. I feel like whenever we're going about our day to day and we face so many different um, just cultural norms and we're hearing so many different voices in our day to day, whether it be from other people or from ourselves, sometimes it's like we're not it's like we don't need permission to say no to those voices or we don't need permission to filter through what do I actually need to take to heart and what do I need to let go. But I love how you said here it's an invitation. Do you feel as though people need that? Yes, yes. And I I think of it very literally. I, I wanted this book to feel like I was sending out an invitation to Mm -hmm. join me on this journey of seeing, wow, right here amidst everything that we're going through, we can have peace. We can breathe deep right here where we are and, and really celebrate and dive deep into this life that we've been given. So I really did think of it because, you know, as you know, writing and sharing your voice, like it it never gets just like a hundred percent easy. Like Mm -hmm. it's, it's so hard to just like, to even for me to get over that barrier of like, Oh, okay. I'm allowed to say something I'm allowed to write. So for me, it's important to kind of frame things in kind of like a real world sense of like, what is that image? And it's like, Oh, it's kind of like, um, 
sending out an invitation. One of my favorite quotes about grace is by um, Frederick Buechner, and I'm totally paraphrasing, <laughs> but <laughs> it's a um, beautiful quote and, and it's pretty popular. I'm sure people have seen it, but it starts with the grace of God looks something like this. And then he describes this kind of just beautiful portrait or picture of like life and all of its mm -hmm. complexities. And one of the, I mean, I, I get chills just even talking about it, but like one of the last parts of it, and I'm paraphrasing, he says, it's a, it's a party that's not going to start without you. And that's oh, how he wow. finds grace. And that just always stuck with me, especially as someone who has dealt with a lot of I mean, especially when I was like in high school and college, like struggling with like, oh, wow, I didn't get invited to that. Like, this might be kind of aging me a little bit, but <laughs> I started <laughs> college when Facebook was like, this is like before Facebook even had a news feed and it was still just like mostly for college students. I love it. So I, <laughs> I remember like everybody getting on it. We were so happy to like sign up with Facebook with our .edu email addresses and all that. And I even remember in those early days of Facebook, like when I was a freshman in college seeing like oh my gosh, all these people hanging out without me. Like, mm -hmm. look at what they're doing. Like, oh, when did they do that? I didn't know they were doing that. And I think a lot of us in different ways have these experiences of fear of missing out or feeling like we're not going to be a part of like, you know, whether it's a big movement or a part of something, you know, in our community in a significant way. So that's why I love that word invitation. It's just like, this is just... This is an invitation for you. Like you are welcome here. I just feel like that's was really important. That's so good because I mean, right off the bat, let's just go into it because that's the gospel. The gospel is an invitation to the whole world to experience this peace that surpasses all understanding through a right relationship with God by Jesus. Like that, I just love that because I think sometimes we can convince ourselves or we can be so convinced by the evil one that, okay, peace just isn't for me because of my story, because of the struggles I've walked through, because of X, Y, Z, because of ABC. That sounds awesome, but I don't fit into that category. And just right off the bat, before they even open the cover, it's like, nope, you're invited. And I feel like that's exactly what God does. Like, nope, you're invited. I came for the whole world and that includes you. So I just, I really liked that and I hadn't even opened the book. So that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad that you even drew attention to that because it was very intentional. So That's so good. What's up, guys? I'm so excited to tell y'all about this magic elixir called Magic Mind. They're our sponsor for today, and here's why you need to know about them. So Magic Mind, if you're watching, you can see that it is a very small bottle, but I got to tell you, it's packed full with all natural ingredients, including adaptogens, nootropics, vitamin C, matcha, turmeric, and more, all to help boost your energy, support your immune system, and decrease your stress. And Magic Mind takes no time because it is so small, it takes no time to incorporate into your morning routine, but whenever you do, it will impact the time throughout the rest of your day for the better. And for listeners of the show, Magic Mind has a special offer. So by going to www.magicmind.co slash Emma and using the code Emma20, that's E M M A two zero, you can get a limited 20% off your first order. Again, that's going to www.magicmind.co slash Emma using the code Emma20. And by doing that, you can get a limited time 20% off your first order. I love y'all. So really simple question, but I feel like every author asks this question to themselves. Why did you write this book and who did you write it to? Yeah, so I wrote this book because I was experiencing a lot of change in my life, as many people were, just over the past couple of years. And one of the things that kind of ended up happening in my life that was sort of just unique to me that I wasn't really expecting was I was diagnosed with autism. And that whole process of realizing that, wow, I might need to pursue a diagnosis to getting the diagnosis was a pretty good chunk of time. It was about 
I want to say six or seven months, maybe. Wow. So it was a it was a time in my life where there was a lot of questions, a lot of looking back in my own life and trying to even put the pieces together of different things that I had struggled with. And it sent me on this journey of recognizing that amidst all of the struggle that I had also experienced so many beautiful, peaceful moments. I had also mm -hmm. encountered peace beyond understanding in so many different ways. And first, I just thought that was while I was still questioning and in this uncertain time, I found that to be such a blessing. And I was like, this is something that I really would like to invite other people to see in their own life is that even amidst the questions, even amidst the uncertainty, we can still look back all across our whole lives, all the way up to the present moment and see that all along there have been these moments where we have been learning to breathe deep. And I have been, um, since 2017, I've been writing for, writing in response, making poetry and artwork in response to people that share their stories with me. And I still invite people. You can email me anytime. Aww. And I, I, you know, I'm not able to get to everybody, but I do try to get to <laughs> as many people as I can because I think it's just so important that even if it's in the smallest way from a stranger on the internet, that we're reminded like, hey, look at how far you've come. Like, mm -hmm. look at how beautiful it is that you've continued to experience grace and peace in your life over and over, even while there's still questions. So in that way, you know, it's kind of a ode to, to all the people who share their stories with me of like, y'all we did this like we're making it through this like one wow. one little instagram graphic at a time like one quote one verse at a time like yeah. we're doing this like we're 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 making it through so um yeah it was it just felt like that was the time i'm like yeah this is the time to to really put that out there and and, and hopefully and encourage other people to see those moments in their life I love that. That's so encouraging. It makes me think of a verse in Proverbs that says, anxiety weighs down the heart, but a cheerful word lifts it up. And through your post, who knows how many people you are lifting up. I just think that's going to be so cool at the end of at the end of this time here on on this side of eternity how many if you're going to get to encounter people you never met while you were here but you're going to get to meet them and they're going to share their testimonies about how god used you to invest into their life and lift them up out of a pit that they didn't know they could get out of that's just to encourage you to not grow weary of doing good because it is not in vain continue to work enthusiastically unto the lord because it is so powerful well, thank you. And yes. once again, you just quoted my favorite verse to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Galatians 6 9, like that is that. I mean, I'm reciting that to myself on a mm -hmm. regular basis because I think that, and, and I, it's something I tried to write about as well, of like, I think that a lot of times, and it sounds so cliche to say, but I'm like, I'm going to keep saying it because if it ends up being in some way a, a cheerful word to someone to ease some anxiety, like I, I want to say it. And that is, it's so easy to see people online or who are writing books or who are putting things out there and say like, oh my gosh, look at what they figured out. They figured their thing out. They're, they're inspiring people. They're so encouraging. They did this, they did that. But as somebody who has been, I consider myself very blessed to have a lot of really awesome experiences that I'm proud of with my artwork and my words being out there. But those questions are still there. That uncertainty, mm -hmm. that weariness still comes. So I definitely have to remind myself of that. It hasn't stopped yet. Wow. Um, that, that verse has not stopped being relevant to me. So um, yeah, that's thanks for thanks for saying that. <laughs> You're welcome. I, that's encouraging. I th I think it's in um, Acts ten. I think. Acts 10 or 11, and it's whenever Cornelius has just um, had, like, 
he's encountered the Lord. I can't remember specifically how the Lord came to him, but he's encountered the Lord in some way. And then at the same time this is happening, the Lord comes to Peter in a, in a vision and he brings Peter to Cornelius and Cornelius is a Gentile. And Peter, of course, is this Jew who's like extremely well known for being a man of God and by the power of God, he's performing miracles. And Peter walks into Cornelius's home and Cornelius like bows down to Peter. And I may butcher this a little bit, but in a sense, Peter lifts him back up and he basically says, I'm human too. Like, I, I'm human. I am not worth this worship. I am, as you said, I am still declaring over my life, don't grow weary because it's really easy to because there is one God and one God alone who is worthy of worship and who has it all figured out. And that's just a great encourager that people who are writing books are figuring it out and praise God that we get to learn alongside them as they share what they learn. So that's mm. just cool. <laughs> and yeah. your, your book is about Peace is a practice, and I feel like peace is a word that, especially as Christians, like we share that word all the time, but even if you're not a Christian, and we're just we're in a society where like mental health is talked about all the time, anxiety is talked about all the time, I think it's being experienced all the time um, on a different level, just with all that's going on in our world, and so because of that, I think peace is talked about all the time. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes there's words that we say so often, but never do we give a definition to. And if people were to really ask you, what is peace? I wonder how many people could actually say what it is. And the fact that you've written a book about it and it's in your title, I wanted to ask you, like, how would you describe peace to those who are listening and are craving it, but may not even know how to define it? Wanting to become a healthier version of yourself? Well, Everly Well can help you do exactly that by providing trusted and tested information to help equip you to better take care of yourself. And here's how it works. Everly Well ships an at-home lab test straight to you with everything that you need for a simple sample collection. And using your prepaid shipping label, you can send your test to a certified lab. And in just a matter of days, you will have physician-reviewed and actionable insights sent straight to your device. And this information you can take to your primary care physician for next guided steps. And here is what I have for you guys. For listeners of the show, Everly Well is offering a special discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash Emma. That's everlywell.com slash Emma for 20% off of your at-home lab test. Again, that's everlywell.com slash Emma. Yes, that's such a good question. And I spend a lot of time thinking about definitions and how words are defined and how we even... Even, I mean, even if you think about in, you know, a biblical context, like how even sometimes the English language, like we have to like kind of backtrack and like, oh wait, you know, they weren't speaking in English. That's a, that's a whole thing. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, and you know, I'm somebody who only speaks one language. So it's, it can be challenging for us a lot of times to even understand fully you know what a word means when when we're still trying to make sure we're understanding the language correctly mm -hmm. so i find that to be so fascinating but one thing that that i love that just transcends language and being able to communicate is images and one thing that i found to be very interesting um, and just growing up as, as a kid, I'm a preacher's kid, and I remember growing up and, and hearing sermons, and I would I would just get kind of lost in the images. And for some time, I thought I was getting distracted. But as I got older and I became an artist, I really feel like God began to reveal me how much power is in these biblical images of and, and and when you when you hear you know when you read the word river like that's not just there to be poetic like <laughs> it's like yeah. God created the river like there's something there so kind of fast forwarding a little bit to how I've come to define peace is I heard the song it is well with my soul as a kid and the first line of the song is when peace like a river attendeth my way and that song is written by Horatio Spafford, who actually 
was writing the song while he was on the ocean to go meet his wife after their daughters had just drowned and died on the ocean. Wow. And to me, the fact that the first line of that song was when peace like a river is the, is the line that came from someone who had to endure so much hardship. I was like, that didn't seem like a coincidence. Mm -hmm. And I started to think about those images of the river that I had read about as a kid. And I was like, oh, peace is kind of like a river. It's a river that runs through the wilderness. That's another word that shows up a lot. Like in the wilderness, this place of unknowns. Oh, there's this river that runs through. So kind of the poetic artistic me just ran with it. <laughs> I ran with oh, it for fun, but yes. in that exploration, I was like, I think this is an image that I want to share with others to help them define what peace means in a practical sense, in a, in a, in a ancient sacred sense. Like it's not just like something that, that we can use to just describe in our current time where we're speaking English in this way. Sorry, I get really nerdy about language, but I love that. <laughs> but, I, no, but I do no think apologize. that sometimes like language as somebody who loves to write, sometimes mm -hmm. language can, in a way, create barriers because we end up trying to intellectualize like, okay, what is peace? How do I get it? What's the step by step? And, but peace is beyond all understanding. <laughs> you know, yeah. peace is not something we could just hold in our hand. So I spent a lot of time thinking about that and, you know, holding our hand in a sense of like, okay, here I got it. Here's peace, you know. Mm -hmm. Other people can buy it 50% off. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. So what I started to think about was, yeah, pursuing peace, that peace beyond all understanding, that's going to be something I have to keep coming back to over and over and over in my life. And practice is the act of doing something over and over and over again. So this whole faith thing, this whole peace thing is something I have to practice. I'm not going to be able to just intellectualize myself there and come up with one, one, you know, English language definition that's going to just help me understand in every instance of my life. It's like, maybe it's not about the understanding as much as it is, is about trusting that when you are in the wilderness, mm -hmm. there is that river and you are free to seek that river now. So yeah. Morgan. Yes. <laughs> yes, friend. I you said two things I have to hit on. I know we talk this thing I'm about to share we we talked about before, but it's in Psalm 23 and it I can't help but think on it whenever you talk about this imagery because in Psalm 23, I think it's so interesting the two things that we see in the same group of like just six verses. So in one chapter alone, we see David write, you lead me beside still and quiet waters. You make me lie down in green pastures. Like he's our shepherd in him. We lack no good thing. He restores my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. And, and so we read that and it's like, Ah, oh, like that sounds awesome. That sounds so like that sounds like peace to me. And what's so crazy though is that the next verse is even though I walk through the darkest valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And what's so cool to me there is that yes, sometimes we may, we may not physically be like led by streams of water and be lying down in green pastures, but our soul is there. Like mm -hmm. he's restoring our soul and our soul can be in that space even when we're in the darkest valley. Wow. And I think that follows right with what you were saying that how can that happen, Emma? Like how on earth, Morgan, are you talking about this? And it, I believe right there with you that it's with trust, mm -hmm. that it's not going to be something that we can wrap our head around. Like the Lord says to trust in him with all our heart and not lean on our own understanding. But in order to do that, and like we have to not lean on on our own understanding in order to have peace that surpasses our understanding. Wow. And so yeah. I just think it's so cool that you just shared that and it encouraged me. So, and wow. the other thing I wanted to hit on too is that you begin to talk about a practice. And I loved it. You gave a definition of practice in your book 
and you said practice is coming back to something over and over again, even when we feel like we're failing. And I wanted to just kind of hang out there for a second. And can you share with us some ways that we can practice peace in our daily life? And what does that look like? And have you experienced practicing peace and feeling like you're failing, but you have to get back up and practice again? Y'all, thank you so much for tuning in. I just wanted to take this hot second and tell y'all about a paid sponsorship that I'm getting to do with Faithful Counseling because life is hard and we weren't made to go about it alone. And Faithful Counseling is an online, worldwide available counseling service that is convenient and accessible no matter where you are globally. They allow counseling service to be available to you via video chat, instant messaging, or phone calls. And these are not just any counselors. These are licensed professional counselors with over 3,000 hours in their respective state. And so guys, this is legit. And you can have 10% off of your first month's worth of counseling sessions by using my link, faithfulcounseling.com forward slash MMA forward slash. And the link is also provided below. That's faithfulcounseling.com forward slash MMA forward slash. I love y'all and I believe in you. Now let's get back to the show. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. And whew, yeah, <laughs> I have <laughs> short answer. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, one of the examples I give in the book and it's just a story from my life and I almost didn't even put it in there because I was like, this is kind of silly, but I I'm also silly. in this place <laughs> of like, I think sometimes that that silly that dis that thing we almost dismiss i'm like i don't know i think there might there's something there sometimes so i put it in there but i tell the story of how when i was learning to drive i would go have to go downtown where where i live i was i grew up in georgia and i, I would go downtown and i um would have to parallel park and to this Old day, I'm girl. a terrible parallel parker. <laughs> so what I would do is every time I would go to parallel park, if I didn't get it right the first time, I would, and then another car pulled up behind me, I would just like get anxious and I would just circle the block again until, and then try to parallel park the next time. And I kept doing that until I got it. Sometimes I would literally circle the block like five times until I got that spot. And as I thought about that, how I literally went in circles until I finally made it in the mm -hmm. slot, I thought about, I was like, you know what? In that moment, I accepted, hey, I'm not good at this and I need a few more tries. And I was like, imagine if I allowed myself the permission to do that in other areas of my life, in other areas where I feel like I'm supposed to be able to get being a perfect parent or a perfect spouse right away. I like, I should know how to do this. I've, I've seen good examples. I've had other people tell me how to do it. I've had other people tell me how to parallel park. I saw my parents do it. Yeah. What if I gave myself permission to say, you know what? We're just going to take a second. We're going to circle back through this tomorrow. And we're going to try to have this conversation again. We're going to try to be present to the moment again. We're going to try to take a deep breath and trust again. Yeah. And that one image of like 19 year old me just circling around and around and around mm -hmm. trying to get it to work was just such a reminder of like, yeah, there's grace for that. There's grace to keep trying. And that's where that practice comes in. That's so good. That's just so good. I, I I've shared this on the podcast before, I think, but, um, you know, sometimes people pick like a word for the year. Mm -hmm. I picked a word when I became a wife. It's my wife word. And my wife word is learner. Because in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, Jesus talks about how like all who are weary and burdened come to him and he will give them rest. And then it goes on to say, he says, learn from me. And I just really honed in on just that one part of that little snippet where Jesus is sharing about his heart and who he is. And I think sometimes we miss out on the joy of the journey whenever we continue to resist permission 
to learn because I feel like if we're not letting ourselves learn, then we're constantly beating ourselves up because we already don't know everything. But if we expect ourselves to, then we miss out on the joy of learning. And I just, I love that so much. Just going over and over again, even if we feel like we're failing, I'm going to get this parallel parking spot and we're going to enjoy the process of it by golly. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes there's no parking deck around and you just got to figure it out. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I, I love that. And I, and I love, you know, because with marriage, you know, you mentioned marriage. I think it's, I think oftentimes, you know, we have these sort of milestones in culture like getting married having kids and it can feel like for a lot of people when those moments happen like i've got to be able to figure it all out like i achieved the thing so now it's time to do it perfectly but that's just not the case <laughs> like you're not you have to learn as you go like that mm -hmm. is the only way it's like it's so great to learn from you know if you have good examples in your life like learn from them like yeah. I, I feel like I'm, I'm very blessed and encouraged by both my parents marriage and um how they parented my sister and I and at the same time I can't just copy and paste and say well here's what they did you know so we're gonna it, it's got to work this you know exact way because as we all know like my parents are wonderful, but here we are, here I am raising a toddler in a global pandemic <laughs> who spent a lot of his yeah. years in this, there's no book. I can't buy a book on it. Like there's no book out there <laughs> on how, to, <laughs> how to raise there a toddler isn't. during lockdowns. Like <laughs> did not, it did not exist. We had to really learn as we went. We had to trust. We had to, so we good, had to be good. faithful and being present and trust that yeah, we're not going to be able to follow this step by step, even though I love step yeah. by step. <laughs> me um, too. Yeah, so I, I love like, recipes. I'm like, just give me the step by step of mm -hmm. what I need to be doing. Um, <laughs> everything from like the big stuff to like what I need to be posting on Instagram. I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> just <laughs> give me a step I by step. I need a step. layout. Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but yeah, instead we, we get opportunities to practice every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. And you even talk about like, I love, I love your book. And for those of you who are listening, you've got to definitely go get pieces of practice whenever it comes out. When does it come out? February 15th, day after Valentine's guys. Day. <laughs> guys, this is so exciting because that's so soon. You've got to pre-order this book and get this book because at the end of each chapter, I love that you do this. There are different ways to practice the different lessons that are written throughout the chapter. And I love that, like yes. just different ways to incorporate what, what you're teaching throughout each chapter, stories that you're sharing and ways to implement it into our own life as a reader. So that's just really cool. Um, and I wanted to ask you, I feel like you've hit on this a little bit, but I want to send people off with this because I know I get tons of DMs about all of the hard times that people are going through because Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble. It's just a guarantee. Um, I've heard many people say, if you're not in a hard time, you're either about to be one or you just got out of one. It's just something's always happening. Um, but that doesn't have to be the case with peace and whether or not we have it. Like John 14, 27, Jesus says, my peace I give you. My peace I leave with you and I do not give to you as the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled. And so I wanted to ask you with that, like though hard times come and go, peace can be a constant thing. Peace can be a continual practice. And so can you share with people how it is that you practice having peace in the midst of hard times, whether that's hearing tough news or it's losing a loved one, or it's having regret from your yesterday? Like, what does it look like? Yes, I, I love to talk about the practical. And that's something that I, that I spend time with in the book. As you mentioned, I have a section at the end of each chapter. And as I really reflected and thought about what I wanted in those sections, I didn't want, because I think that there's a lot of ways you could approach that word practical of like, okay, let's get practical. Here's the step by steps. And again, I love step by steps, but <laughs> for this book, I was like, you know, I want to try not to have so many step by steps so that we recognize that peace is something that we can practice and kind of just 
in the moment, like in the moment that we need to, and we don't have to like go flip back to the page, you know, so and so and go through each step. And one of those that I that I actually give, and it's one of my favorites in the book, it is when I'm talking about grief. Um, unfortunately, I, I have experienced the, the loss of quite a few loved ones in my life. And that's something that is, um, it's been familiar in my life is walking through that, that grief. And I had to think, I'm like, you know, what are some moments that amidst that grief, in that grief that, that God gave me a sense of peace. And oftentimes it was when I reflected on a place in nature that reminded me of them, or mm -hmm. I reflected on a, on a photograph that I felt like really embodied our relationship. Or when I reflected on a conversation that we had, I had, um, I had one of my uncles pass away who was a sculptor and he would make these amazing oh, wow. pieces. And now when I see, um, he, he was using like metal work. And now when I see like other people's metal work, that's a moment where I'm practicing peace. Cause I'm like, oh, that reminds me of my uncle and the work that he used to make. And when I was a kid, I wasn't even an artist yet. I was just so amazed by what he would make. And, you know, for many reasons, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously saddened that he's not here anymore. And at the same time, those little moments where I'm reminded of him, I know that that matters. I know that that's a moment where I'm encountering peace because even though there is grief at the same time, there is a sense of, wow, I'm glad to have known this person in my life in this way. So that's one example that I give. And I, I tried to write it in a way that it didn't feel like this big pressure thing that you had to do, but maybe even something you recognize, wait, I've already been doing that. You've already been practicing peace. You have already been practicing that in such a beautiful way. So yeah, that's that's one of the examples and they're, they're there all throughout the book. That's so good. That's so good. I'm so encouraged, guys. I hope that you are too. I love, I want to leave this with you all. I love in um, Isaiah 26, 3. I feel like this is a verse I share all the time because it's one that I just have hidden in my heart and refer back to in my own life a lot. And Isaiah is simply saying of this regarding the Lord that those who fix their thoughts on the Lord, he will keep them in perfect peace. How sweet. I feel like so much of our conversation today, we were, we were talking about peace and a big underlying reality of that peace that we can put into practice is trust in God and where is your focus fixed? In the midst of grief, in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of hard times, in the midst of your every day, what does it look like to practice peace? Could, could look like a variety of ways as we just talked about one and so many more in Morgan's book. I feel like a foundational thing of all those practices is where is your trust? Where is your focus? Because if God is peace, then if we're looking to anything other than him, we're not going to find that peace that surpasses all understanding. And as we said at the very beginning of this conversation, that peace in God is made fully available to you and you are invited to taste and see all that it is today, which is so awesome. So I hope you accept that invitation that has been personally sent to you by the Lord. And Morgan, I would love if you shared with everybody where they can stay in touch with you and the incredible work that you're doing and sharing, where they can go to pre-order your book, all the things. And even I saw you have art that you're selling at Target, which I myself clicked the link and went and checked it out because I just love everything you do. So <laughs> share with people all the things they can um, do and go to to stay in touch. Yes. Well, thank you. I, I've enjoyed this conversation. Such a blessing. Thank you so much. So I'm working hard for Nichols pretty much everywhere. I, I try to make everything easy to find on my website, morganharpernichols.com. You can find the book, the the um <laughs> the book my podcast my app all the good stuff and cool. yeah i have i have art out there in the world and um target was one of the places and yeah it's it's been pretty pretty exciting but yeah you can find all the details you can find all the details and all the updates at morganharpernichols.com 
I love that. Friend, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do and all that you are and for taking the time to be with us. Bless me and I know bless so many people who are tuning in. And guys, if you are watching on YouTube, I'm so thankful that you got to be on YouTube and see their video. That's so fun. Be sure and like, subscribe, comment down below how you were encouraged and also what content you'd like to see moving forward. And if you are tuning in via Apple or Spotify, be sure and um, rate, review, download all the things. Share it with your people. What an incredible message to share with people no matter what time of year, no matter who you're sending it to. All of us were made for peace and we're craving peace and it is in the Lord that we find peace. So guys, y'all are wonderful. Go follow us on Instagram. Have you heard podcasts? I'll see y'all next week.